Alina Panina is a 26-year-old Ukrainian border guard and dog trainer. She was among hundreds of soldiers, police and border guards who survived the siege of Mariupol. In the warren of tunnels and bunkers deep beneath the Azovstal steelworks, they were the southern port city's last bastion of defence. They fired from the air, they launched rockets from the sea, then tanks. Later the Russian infantry arrived. In a final act of defiance before their surrender in May, Alina, here on the left, joined others in singing the national anthem. They were taken to Olenivka, a grim detention center near the Russian-occupied eastern city of Donetsk. Despite Russian denials, others have claimed torture was commonplace here. Alina struggles to find the words. Every day in there felt like a week. It was a closed room meant for six people, and we had 28 women in there. They did lots of different things to us. They would exert psychological pressure, swear at us, and they did other things. I cannot describe them. Then, at the end of July, there was an explosion. Dozens of Ukrainian prisoners of war were killed in what Russia said was Ukrainian shelling. Alina's account supports satellite imagery and independent analysis that indicates the explosion came from within. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called it the deliberate mass murder of POWs. It happened after 10 p.m. We heard screams, dogs barking. The wounded were brought to us into the women's building. We gave them what medical care we could and they told us what happened. They said half of them were already asleep, others were still up, talking, when the explosion happened. They said it happened on the inside. Some of them said they saw the explosion itself. If it had been shelling, there would have been destruction in lots of places. But there was only one hole in the roof of the building, meaning it could only have come from inside. In October, Alina was among more than 200 Ukrainians released in a surprise prisoner swap. But she returned home without her fiancé, Ilya, who was captured just before the siege of Azovstal began. He's been imprisoned since the 12th of April. He hasn't called once. His capture was confirmed. He's on the lists. But where he is exactly, I don't know. Alina longs, too, for the return of Sonia, the beloved Cocker Spaniel who was her constant companion in the hell, as she describes it, of Azovstal. Sonia, she believes, is also still being held by the Russians. Jonah Hull, Al Jazeera, Kyiv.